Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at Jadwiga of Poland. Uh, so getting right into things, uh, Jadwiga's first ability is known as Lithuanian Union, and what it does, it makes it so that the religion founded by Poland becomes the majority in, um, in any adjacent city that loses a tile to a Polish culture bomb. Um, in addition to this, holy sites gain standard faith adjacency bonus from adjacent districts um, instead of minor, um, and all relics provide an additional two faith, two culture, and four gold. Um, so Lithuanian Union Union, it is, it's, it's both part good and part bad. Um, the fact that a, a city that um, loses a tile to a culture bomb will flip to your religion, I mean, it's really not that great, because if it's going to be a city that's next to your borders anyways, hopefully you would have converted it by the time that you would be, you know, placing an encampment or building a fort on that tile. Um, but it is something there nonetheless. Um, the fact that holy sites gain standard um, faith adjacency bonus from adjacent districts is really, really nice. Um, it just allows you to get a lot more faith, and especially now, you know, in Rise and Fall with the government districts, if you are able to incorporate your holy sites into, like, a, a government plaza, um, like, hexagon of districts, you can get quite high adjacency bonuses on your holy sites, so that part is very nice. Um, and in addition, the fact that relics give plus two more faith, two more culture, and four gold, um, it can actually be really good if you're able to get a relic in the early game. Um, but if you're not able to get a relic, then obviously this is going to be, you know, pretty much just non-impactful whatsoever. Um, but if you do happen to get a relic, I find that it can be quite helpful. Um, Jadwiga's second ability is known as Golden Liberty, and what it does is it makes it so that you, uh, you culture bomb adjacent tiles when you complete an encampment or you build a fort inside your territory. Um, so what a culture bomb does is it just claims the tiles that are adjacent to, uh, either the fort or the encampment. Um, and it should be noted that even if the encampment, um, like, is next to enemy tiles, it will still take their tiles away from them, so that is something that is, um, quite funny, kind of nice, um, and in addition, Jadwiga makes it so that one of her military policy slots, um, is converted to a wild card policy slot. Um, so Golden Liberty is, it's once again a mixed bag of both good and bad. Um, the culture bomb thing, I don't know, it's not, it's not really that good. You can maybe make use of it to, like, nab a strategic resource or an extra luxury or something like that, but aside from that, like, I don't find that I'm really going to be needing to steal tiles from my opponents that bad, so I don't find culture bombs too useful. Um, but the fact that one of your military policy slots is, uh, converted into a wild card slot is actually really nice, um, especially in the early game, because what this allows you to do, um, is it makes it so that, um, you, once you get, uh, what is it, is it mysticism that unlocks the oracle and the, 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 uh, the policy card for plus two great profit points per turn, you can run that the second you unlock it. Um, so you're able to, to, to get to a great profit super easily with Poland just because of this. Um, and, you know, it just gives you a little bit more versatility because maybe you don't want to run anything in your, uh, in your military slot, so you could maybe run a different, um, Maybe a different, you know, like, diplomatic card, or a different, uh, whatever the other one's called, I never remember what the categories are called. Um, but it just kind of adds a little bit of versatility to Poland, and for that, it is quite nice. Moving on to Poland's unique unit, we have the Winged Hussar, which is a fantastic name. Um, and it is a, it's a completely unique unit that is unlocked with mercenaries, so it doesn't replace anything. Um, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna compare it to the Knight, because that's a very similar unit. Um, so the Winged Hussar has a melee strength of 55, which is 7 higher than the Knight, has a movement of 4, which is the exact same as Knight, and a production cost of 250, which is 70 more than the Knight. Um, in addition to this, it has some special abilities. Uh, the big one is that it pushes units back if it deals more damage than it takes. Um, so what this means is that, you know, say you attack like, I don't know, like an enemy swordsman or something like that, and you deal 70 damage to the horseman and it deals 30 damage to you. Um, all that means is that it's just gonna push that swordsman back a single tile, and, um, one thing I didn't put in, like, in the text here, is that if, if there's something that's blocking the, uh, the unit from moving back, like maybe another unit or a mountain or something, it will just make it so that your Winged Hussar will deal more damage than it already is. Um, so that is quite nice. And in addition, the Winged Hussar is, uh, it doesn't require any strategic resources. Um, so overall, I think the Winged Hussar is, it's, it's a good unit, um, the fact that it's totally unique, though, means you can't pre-build it, though, and it does have a bit of a steep production cost to it, um, so that does suck, but, um, just, you know, strictly speaking, like, as a unit, it is quite good, because plus seven combat, uh, yeah, plus seven combat strength from knights, um, that is, that is pretty substantial, and it's just gonna be a faster knight, you know, that has all the same movement, or it's not gonna be a faster knight, it has the exact same movement as a knight, it's gonna be a stronger knight, um, that has the same movement, so you can really just run around, you can bully people, um, you can push all the units back whenever you fight them, um, but it really does suck that you can't pre-build them, as I've said, uh, just because having 70 production cost higher than knight, that, that can add, you know, three or four turns, um, just based on where you get the Wing of Sar, um, with, you know, mercenaries, so you might be able to, uh, 
you know, have that extra production cost not be too impactful if you have some really good cities, um, but the extra production cost does kind of suck, and it is something that kind of balances out the strength of the Wigan Hussar. Poland's unique building is known as the Sukhanitse, which is a special building that replaces the bank. Um, it provides plus three gold, uh, one great merchant point, and one citizen slot, which are all the same as the bank. Um, but the special thing about the Sukhanitse is that it provides plus four gold um, from all internal trade routes, so that's going to be trade routes between your cities, um, and uh, for all international trade routes, to, so trade routes to other players or city-states, um, it's going to provide plus two production. Uh, so the Sukhanitse... It can be really good, actually, um, especially with the plus four gold, because what the plus four gold with internal trade routes means, it um, it can really help if you're going domination and, you know, a lot of people are going to hate you and declare war on you, and, you know, maybe you want to fight with your nearest neighbor. Um, the Sukin Yitze makes it so that you can send your trade routes internally, um, and you'll still be able to keep a pretty decent gold output, so you're not going to be getting crushed on unit maintenance too much, because you're going to be able to keep up um, just because of the fact that you have your Sukhanites and you can get quite a few trade routes going internally between your cities, and that's going to amount to quite a bit of gold. Um, so that part is quite nice, plus two production from international trade routes. Um, I mean, it's I guess it's okay. Two production really is not that much, though. That's like effectively one extra mine, um, you know, maybe even less than that, depending on what you have in the city and how far you are into the game. Um, but overall, the Sukhanites, it's it's good, but it's not it's not outstanding in any way. And now with all of this in mind, let's go ahead and talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Jadwiga and the Polish in Civilization VI. Uh, so for the first strength, uh, I think that the Wingen Hussar is a really strong unit. Um, it has a high movement, it's got um, way above average combat strength for when you get it with mercenaries. Um, so with the Wingen Hussar, if you're able to get a bunch of them, then you can just go and steamroll people pretty easily, because you'll be able to defeat knights like easily just because you have you straight up have higher combat strength than them, and you're gonna have you're gonna make them you know expend a little bit more movement and such, uh, trying to you know recover whenever you push them back. Um, the Winged Hussar, though, I mean, it is really strong, but the main weakness of the Winged Hussar is that you really can't pre-build it, so I, I do consider that to be a big a big weakness of uh, the Polish, and that kind of hurts their ability to play domination, um, because you can't time a push with Winged Hussars really at all, and I mean, they are quite expensive production-wise to build, um, so that does kind of suck. So I consider the Winged Hussar to be both a strength and weakness of the Polish, um, just because it is really strong, it's a quality unit, you know, it moves fast, hits hard, um, but it is expensive to build, and, you know, you, you can't do a rush with them. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both the good and bad for the Polish. Uh, the other strength with uh, Poland is that it is very easy to get a religion with Poland, um, just because of the fact that one of your military slots becomes a wild card slot. Um, so, you know, that allows you, as I said, once you get mysticism, you can put in the uh, the card that gives you two great profit points per turn, um, and if you have a holy site down by then, then you'll be getting, you know, an additional one. So you'll, you'll probably be making more great profit points than anybody else in the game, um, unless Russia's there, you know, they... They might be a little bit rude, or, you know, if someone else has just managed to get down a lot of holy sites because it's deity and they just managed to plop them down like it's no tomorrow. Um, but aside from that, it is quite easy to get a religion with Jadwiga because you can rush it really hard um, by running that policy slot, um, or the policy card, like, early on. Um, so that is something that's very nice because she she does benefit from a, re a religion quite, quite greatly. Um, you know, we just talked about uh, Peter in the last video and how Peter Peter's religion really enables him to do anything. Um, it's kind of more of the same with Jadwiga because, I mean, she's not quite as good as Peter. Um, but with her religion, she's able to do a lot of things. She can kind of use the religion to do, um, to help her win, you know, like culture or domination or anything like that. Um, and it is just quite easy to get. So I, I do consider the fact that it's easy to get to be a major strength of her because other civs that, you know, they're supposed to play religion, but then you don't get a great profit, well, then that civ sucks. So uh, big strength for uh, for Jadwiga um, just on her ease of getting great profits. And now it is that time to give Jadwiga her tier rankings. So if you're new to the series, what I do is I give each of the leaders uh, tier rankings in each of the four victory types, so domination, science, culture, and religion, and I give them an overall ranking that just kind of gauges their, their ability against the other civs in the game and takes into account things such as their spawn bias, you know, um, their versatility, and such things like that. So let's go ahead and rank Jadwiga. So domination's up first, and I think Jadwiga deserves a B in domination. Um, she does have a little bit of, dom of, of domination bonuses, you know. Um, the Winged Asar is a pretty strong unit, um, um, it is balanced a little bit by the fact that it's so expensive, you know, and you can't pre-build them. Um, but if you are able to get some of them out on the battlefield, you'll be able to dominate most of the other units that are in that era. Um, so for that reason, she, she does have quite a bit of a power spike there. Um, 
In addition to this, um, the fact that the Sukin Yitse um, gives you a lot more gold from internal trade routes than you would otherwise get makes it so that you can kind of you can war pretty easily without having to worry about your gold too much. Um, because as long as you have some some Sukin Yitse's down um, within your cities, you can send some internal trade routes, and you should be pretty much just fine on gold. You're not gonna have to worry about you know warring with your neighbor, preventing you from trading and getting gold. Um, so that's just not a problem with Yadviga. So for that reason, I think she deserves a B because overall she is pretty okay. Um, and in addition, one thing I didn't mention is that you can use your religion, um, just in, with the ease it is to get a religion with Yadviga, you can use uh, the Crusade belief to kind of just help um, augment your domination game a little bit as well. So, um, once again, even just, you know, a further little bit of reinforcement that she deserves to be because she is, she's pretty okay, but she's, she's not fantastic with the domination, so I think she deserves a B. Uh, as far as science is concerned, I think she deserves a C in science. She really just has no bonus, and there's not really much of a reason to go for science with Yadviga. Um, unlike some of like the the strict domination civs that like you're gonna have a ton of campuses, and you might just be like, you know, in the late game, you might just realize that suddenly domination isn't working so well, so you might just go, eh, I guess I'll go science. Uh, that's not really gonna happen with Yadviga, just because there's so many other things that you can go with her um, that she does get bonuses to. Uh, so for that reason, she's just kind of average in science, and I think she gets a C. Uh, as far as culture is concerned, I think she gets a B in culture. She's, she's pretty okay in culture. Um, she does get the additional culture from relics, so that kind of incentivizes you to go for a bit more relics or, you know, maybe trade for them with the AI or, you know, whoever else is in the game because uh, that can give you a little bit more tourism, a little bit more culture, and that can be just, you know, kind of helpful. Um, Aside from that, though, you know, there's there's not really too much that gives her outstanding bonuses to culture. You could maybe you can maybe use like your culture bombs to secure a few more tiles to place some seaside resorts or maybe a wonder or something of the sort. Um, but aside from that, you know, that's not going to be too great. Um, but you once again can use religion to kind of augment a culture game. You can go for a choral music to get some culture from your uh, your religious buildings. Um, because whenever you are playing Yadviga, I would recommend building a lot of holy sites. So if if uh, if you happen to pick up choral music, that can give you a bit more culture, and you can also get the belief that gives you culture from followers in foreign civilizations. Um, so for that reason, I think she's she's pretty okay in culture. Um, she definitely can use her religion to kind of help her out a lot more with culture. So for that reason, I think she deserves a B. Uh, as far as religion is concerned, uh, I think she definitely deserves an A in religion. She's one of the better religious civs in the game. Uh, she does get the ad the additional adjacency bonus to her holy sites. So uh, if you're able to group them up quite nicely, then you can you can get quite high adjacency bonuses on them, which can give you more faith, which just allows you to purchase more missionaries and apostles and spread your religion that much further. And uh, much like with Peter, uh, she's she's able to use her religion to augment any other victory type, really. Um, except in this case, I wouldn't recommend science. Um, but she can use her religion to augment a lot of other things or she could straight up go for a religious victory. Um, and also, it is really nice that it's quite easy to get a, uh, a great profit with her because the uh, the wild card slot in the early game that replaces your military slot allows you to run the, uh, the great profit point uh, policy card that you get with mysticism. Uh, so that just kind of ensures that you're going to get a religion because you'll probably have way more great profit points than other people in the game. Um, so it'll just allow you to get your religion down pretty fast and it'll allow you to spread to your nearest neighbors quite easily. So for that reason, I think she definitely deserves an A in religion. Um, and as far as her overall rank is concerned, uh, I think she deserves a B. Uh, I've, I've said it a lot this video that, you know, she's good, but she's not outstanding, and, well, that's that's pretty much what she is. Uh, compared to the other civs, you know, she has she has some bonuses. She not, she's not as bad as some of them, um, but she just she's not outstanding like some of the other ones for culture, you know, like maybe playing Congo or playing Persia, God forbid, you know, the overpowered civ. Um, but, you know, uh, she, she definitely has a few bonuses. She's pretty good in religion, and she's kind of like a crappier version of Peter. I mean, you know, Peter was who we talked about in the last video. Uh, but she can use her religion to augment a lot of things, and she can do it fairly decently. Um, but she does have a lot of balances, like, especially with her Winged Asar. Um, otherwise, she would be really good, because the Winged Asar would be incredibly strong. But the fact that you can't pre-build them and they have higher production cost, um, it just kind of balances her out. And, you know, for every good thing that Yadviga has, she has something that's bad as well. Um, but the good still outweighs the bad by a little bit, so I think she deserves a B. So thank you everyone for watching, I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoy the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.